Excellent. Thank you for that um, very colorful introduction. I think we're going to just um, get started because there aren't really a lot more words that I can add to that. So um, let's go, Ed. OK. So this is my dad. Um, he died last July of an overdose. Um, he had a long struggle with prescription painkillers and cocaine. He was only 45 years old. Um, losing him taught me a lot. And his addiction stemmed from when I was quite young all the way till I was older. But I knew that even through that, better things were coming. I wanted to see more, I wanted to do more, and I wanted to explore more than him and my family were able. So you can see, I came to the UK to do these things. Um, I've led a really wonderful life here, graduated from Cardiff University, did a lot of traveling, and immersed myself in the arts community. Cardiff is an excellent place to be a poet. Um, so that made it even more difficult after five years of living here to hear that my dad had died in such a sudden and tragic way. I thought that it might happen, but I didn't really expect it. Addiction can lull you into a false sense of security. So after I received this call a couple of weeks, I had to go back home um, to prepare for his funeral, get his ashes put into jars, and make a collage for his memorial. This brought up a lot of difficult memories for me, um, a lot of things that I wasn't really expecting. I also had to travel down south to Florida where he bought his new home. I was meant to see him there in October, so going there was especially strange in July when he was no longer there. It was also strange to see his home was not a family home and in fact was the home of an addict. So all of these things made me want to write. I've always been a writer, but I wanted to write more than I ever wrote before. I wanted to chronicle his life so that he didn't disappear, and I wanted to understand my own experiences in a way that I couldn't do just talking about them. But not only did I want to write, I also wanted to read. I wanted to see how other writers dealt with this really insane emotion. I wanted to feel like I wasn't going mad. So I read as much as I possibly could. Um, I started off with memoir, reading people like C.S. Lewis, as well as Ken Budd. I listened to their narratives through their words. I tried to understand how they got through it. But not only that, um, after the memoir, I moved on. I moved on to poetry, to poets like this. Um, these poets taught me how to do something amazing. They had such tragic experiences losing their daughters, their spouses, and they turned this trauma into something really small, something minimalistic, something simplistic. It punched you in the gut. And I realized I wanted to do that too. I wanted people to know how grief felt because I had no idea before I felt it. So I wrote. I wrote for six months, for nine months, I'm still writing now. And the thing that I found out is that grief is really, really lonely. So not only did I want to write, but I wanted to share. I started reading my poetry at pubs, at cafes, in art galleries, but I met some people there, but not enough. So I decided to set up a writing group called Death Writing in Cardiff so that I could tell other people that they are not alone. Um, and it was incredible. So I had all these people from all walks of life coming to talk about their grief, but not just talk, we wrote together, we read together, we shared together, and in this space, we were able to take our collective vulnerability, all of the things that scared us about our grief, and bring it together, and it gave us strength. And this was amazing. Now you might think that bringing a lot of people together to talk about death and to talk about grief is really depressing, but actually it's not. <laughs> it's incredibly uplifting. Um, it's really liberating to talk about something that people never talk about and to learn about other people's experiences. So this is really what the past year and four months has taught me since I lost my dad. I learned a lot about myself, I learned about a lot about my writing, and I learned a lot about other people. Um, and this was really, really powerful for me. And I also learned a lot about grief because before my dad died I had no idea what grief was like I thought it was linear I thought okay I'd be sad now but soon it'll be all right and then it'll end but it doesn't grief is totally bonkers it makes you feel crazy I didn't want to leave the house I wanted to leave the house I couldn't sleep I couldn't eat I couldn't focus I couldn't do anything but I wrote and that is what I really wanted to do it was the only thing that kept me anchored that made me realize that all of these crazy emotions could be put down and could give other people who'd never experienced grief an opportunity to see what I was going through. And I'm so incredibly grateful for their attention and for your attention and for all the people who listen to me. So I'm gonna leave you with just one thing. If you are grieving, please, please write. Um, it will do you good. If you are not grieving, please listen. And to everyone else out there in the audience, please be kind. You cannot imagine how big a difference such a small act can make to someone who has lost a person they love. Thank you. Wow, it was amazing.